Hey, I'm Greg Wyshynski. And I'm Dave Lozo. And you're in Puck Soup. Get it? You're, yeah, oh, Jesus. Thanks to everybody who uh, listened to us on the America vs. Wyshynski podcast on Sportsnet for so long. Uh, we've uh, transported the fun to Nerdist Sports, beginning with this episode featuring Katie Nolan of Fox Sports 1's Garbage Time. Of the Emmy nominated. Yeah, the, she, yeah she's Garbage now time. Emmy nominated. Very excited about yes. that. Also, YouTube fame, you may remember her from such rants as Greg Hardy is a piece of shit right. and things of that nature. Uh, so we were delighted to have her in as our first guest. It's a episode-long guest shot. Most of our guests, I believe, on Puck Soup will probably last maybe half the show or, or right. three, two-thirds of the show or something like that. But Katie, we had her in studio, and we weren't, we weren't going to let that gold leave the room, so no. we had her in for the entire episode. Like most of our guests, like think of it like sex. Most of our guests will probably be ten minutes <laughs> 15 minutes long and that's good right. I mean let's not let's not pretend like that's not a long time to mm-hmm. go but if we have someone capable of going the full hour we're not going to pass up I, I have to admit I'm a little hazy on this because when people talk about going as long as they do I'm mm-hmm. a t- 10 minute does the 10 minutes include foreplay or is it just 10 minutes of, of the actual act no I think once once something's inserted into something else that's, that's when that's when the clock starts when the clock starts it's like in basketball right. like the shot clock doesn't reset till it hits the rim right or you, you have, have to you have to hit the rim you have to hit the rim or you yeah. have to pick up the ball in order to make the clock the shot the clock start, remember how they roll the ball out from the uh, right, right, yeah. right. Foreplay is basically like when there's like 15 seconds left and they're trying to conserve clock, and they roll the ball, and the guard kind mm-hmm. of pretends to pick it up, and mm-hmm. then then the clock starts, right. and then when it hits the rim, boom, we're counting down. Because what is sex if not clock management? Right. So. Essentially, Katie Nolan's our first guest in the podcast. We wanted to do a quick intro. When you hear this show, uh, you'll be hearing us re- refer to the podcast we're doing now as. It's Hockey Time with Greg and Dave, which was a very twee and interesting name for the yes. show, but ultimately one that we decided against. <laughs> so we felt the need to do a quick intro to this interview, not only to introduce ourselves to you, the Nerdist Sports uh, listener, and also say thanks to all our old listeners for porting over to the new podcast, but also explaining why you'll hear a different name for the podcast on this interview. Right. And hi, Nerdist. Goodbye, Marek Wyshynski. Thanks for having me. Mm-hmm. And also, um, we should point out that Greg, he came up with It's Hockey Time. And then decided he didn't like it. And to show you how dedicated he is to putting out such a quality product, he had his daughter sing a theme song <laughs> to It's Hockey Time, forced her to do it. You should hear the Sorry. audio because the audio sounds like she's being held hostage and she has to record this. Otherwise, her family will die. And then said, you know what? We got to do a different, a different title. And we did because that's how dedicated he is to a good product. I promise you if you come back for episode two, we will pay, play the lost theme song of It's Hockey Time with Greg and Dave. And once yeah. you hear my, my six-year-old daughter sounding as unenthused <laughs> as a child would sound if they were going to the dentist. Uh, it's very exciting. So anyways, thanks to Jonah Carey for the opportunity to bring our podcast over thanks, to Jonah. Sports. Thanks to Katie Levine for putting this whole thing together. Thanks, our first Katie. podcast and podcast by us in perpetuity. And here, uh, without further ado, it's uh, podcast. Puck Soup with our first guest, Katie Nolan of Fox Sports 1 on our pilot episode. Yes. And please do stay to the end so you can hear Katie Nolan make the single greatest pilot episode joke in the history of pilots and or jokes. It's going to go down as the best pilot joke you're ever going to hear. Now entering Nerdist.com. Sticks and hits and goals and saves and slap shots and goons. We've got sport the commentary to what a few commute. But we also cover movies, TV shows, eats and tunes. It's your weekly bowl of hoggy and nonsense. Box <sighs> soup. It's hockey time with Greg and Dave. It it's is the hockey actual time. new name of the show. For those of you who listen to us on the Sportsnet side of the equation, this is the new home. This is the Nerdist Sports home where we're taking our podcast. Right. For those of you who are listening for the first time, I am Greg Wyshynski of Yahoo Sports Puck Daddy blog. You're supposed to say your name now. Oh, it sounded like you were going to keep going. I thought you had like more credentials. <laughs> no, I have no credentials. It was like a cliffhanger. What am I going to do? And I'm Dave Lozo of my apartment. There you go. In Hoboken, New Jersey. And, uh, and this is the hockey podcast that we do. Um, I'm excited to be a part of the Nerdist family. I don't know about you, because it definitely increases the chances mm-hmm. that Chris Hardwick will do a show talking about this very podcast I wanna, at least once a week. I want to do a show that's 12 hours long, so at some point during the podcast, he can say it's 11.59 and 59 seconds. <laughs> so the, but the other thing, too... That's, that's what I want to have the, happen. But I like the idea of, like, there's a show where Retta talks about our show and, you know, comes in. And there's callers. There's, you know, trivia about our show. 
Oh, like and we would, like, like a recap. Yeah, he would I, do the I, recap of the show. He wouldn't actually be on the show. He'd do a recap and talk about everything right, that exactly. happened on the show. Doug Benson does a thing called micro impressions, and I have a micro impression of Chris Hardwick. You really like to hear it? Do you want to get us kicked off a Nerdist? Like, no, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get our cre- credentials set that we we're part of the family now. Okay, you hear it? Here we go. Yeah. Ready? Welcome to Nerdist Podcast. That's it. That's it. That's just the top of the Nerdist Podcast every time. Thank you. That was I was I was really good. Thank I you. Thought, I, I I don't have one. I'd follow up and try to like one up you, but I don't really have one. <clears throat> so for those that don't, so Jonah Carey, who's uh, putting together a Nerdist Sports thing, asked if we wanted to be part of this cavalcade of fun, and we said yes. We had a, a podcast. Uh, like we said, that aired every Wednesday. Uh, a lot of people really like it um, because it's sort of hockey as a clothesline on which to hang a lot of other bullshit. A lot of people didn't like it because <laughs> it's hockey as a clothesline on which to hang a lot of other bullshit. Like if you enjoy six minutes of hockey talk <laughs> followed by 20, 24 minutes of the analysis of last night's OJ episode, yeah. then this is this is for you. Yeah. This is really going to be your, your podcast. And by the way, just to let you know, uh, although I've run hot and cold on Kubo Degrading Jr. as O.J. Simpson, the moment in which they had him recreate the aerobics video that they used as evidence to show that he was agile and could have pulled off the murders. It's a brilliant show. Amazing. It's a brilliant show. Absolutely amazing. The first two episodes are bad because they're so Schwimmer heavy. <laughs> because it's just Schwimmer emoting in really weird ways. It's like it's almost like he's like, all right, remember that time Rachel did that thing with Mark? Mm-hmm. Like, just remember that and mm-hmm. be sad about it. And he just, like, his jaw trembles, his lip trembles. I was watching some really early uh, seasons of uh, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, you know, Dead Sick Without the Beard and uh, Rob was all thin. And uh, and I was they were talking about their dead dad, and I kept on thinking to myself, what do they think now that their dead dad is probably a guy they used to watch on Friends? I... <laughs> I think they look into the, the TV and they just start chanting, Kardashian, <laughs> Kardashian. <laughs> Which was an actual thing from the show, from that, the OJ right, show. That was, that was one of the, like, the first two episodes <laughs> are like Sharknado, and the last seven at this point, or maybe the last eight at this point, are actually good, because it's all the people that can act, as opposed to the guy that played the really stupid paleontologist right. for ten years exactly. on NBC. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So it's really good. So when you're done listening to this, go watch all the OJ episodes so you're caught up on all of our really cool references. I know that the blood is everywhere because obviously OJ is guilty. I can't walk away now. Um, I can't. Uh, hockey credentials, I'm a Devils fan. You grew up a Devils fan, but you've kind of, you're like a lapsed Catholic when it comes to the Devils, right? I don't give... Wait, can we curse on their yeah, podcast? Yeah, we can, yeah. I don't give a flying frog's fuck <laughs> about the Devils. Or really any team. I don't care. If, I don't care if your favorite team wins or loses. I'm just there to watch a hockey game that's mm-hmm. really good, mm-hmm. as opposed to Devils games, which are always never interesting yeah. or fun. Well, I still live and die by my team, and I still believe that depending on whether or not I drink a, a, a cup of pink lemonade at night and spin around three times, uh, determines right. whether or not they win or lose the game. Just like when I was 13, you're deranged, <laughs> pretty much. You're 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 a, you're a father of a child who believes that he controls the outcomes of sporting events from his couch. That's that's totally normal. You should teach your children. Well, there's right. a very good chance you could grow up to be like Akira then, you know, trying to tap into her psychic powers and control things. Akira? Oh, God. Let's not talk. You mean Shakira? No. Can she it, do that? No. no. <laughs> Last time I mentioned anime. Joining us now on the podcast in our pilot episode is... Oh, I've been here the whole time. Someone that Just we Just walking love. in the door right now. Who's, <laughs> oh, my God. Who is it? In? Oh, whoa. Just let's silently see. sitting and holding oh, back my OJ takes. Why, it's, I believe it's our wacky neighbor, Katie Nolan, from Fox Sports 1's Garbage Time. <laughs> Hey guys, you hey. guys have a cup of sugar I can borrow? <laughs> no, but why don't you stick around for the next Ooh, 40 minutes? Golly, sounds good. <laughs> What's oh, going boy. on in here? A hockey podcast? As what? long as it's only four minutes of hockey talk oh, and man. 36 of oh, 20 math. The setup, it. The, Bye, guys. the setup of every porno I've ever watched. A woman walks in during a hockey podcast. Right. One of most of my porn's from Canada, You by made the way. this weird because this room is really small. <laughs> really and I is. now would like to back away from you, and I can't. Yeah, Katie Nolan's a big star, and I want to apologize <laughs> for us for putting you in what is essentially the utility closet of Yahoo. That's well, where they put the microphones, though. Compared to my studio, I, the adjective I would use for this is roomy. So uh, I'm cool with it. My, t- my studio is very small. Katie Nolan, you do a podcast called Garbage Time. Wh- what kind of studio do you use for that podcast? Uh, well, so it's actually like a converted reception area of an abandoned uh, office <laughs> building. And so it's big in space. Like, it's spacious. Uh, but it also, like, we use clip mics and we don't know what we're doing. You use so. what kind of mics? Clip, like little, oh, like, clip. You clip them on your I shirt. Think you said yeah. Else. yeah, they're well, impossible yeah, it's a to find. Well, yeah, it's a woman's sports right, show. Yes, I mean, they like... are impossible to find. <laughs> 
<laughs> the reception Jets. area, huh? So do you, do you always have multiple lines ringing at all times? With uh, no, but the them? elevator dings constantly <laughs> while we're just trying to talk about anything but sports. Katie Nolan, I was surprised to find out from Dave Lowe's the other day. That I, I was always, for whatever reason, under the impression that you were probably a Rangers fan, but you're a Bruins fan. Why the fuck oh would God. I be a I, Rangers fan? I, I know. Wait, wait, I just wait, assume wait, why, why did I bring that The kind of celebrity that, that would go to the MS, MSG, they'd show you on the big screen like Adrian Grenier or right, like all the, time. the dude that died from the Eagles. Like, many Many, 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 he many died, and people. then they showed him on the. What was he? Is this like a weekend at Bernie situation? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Somebody just brought his yeah, lifeless there, corpse to a Rangers game. There are two guys in the fifth fan? row, like propping up his arms, like flapping them around to make sure that no one was Wait, suspicious. Does like, like, he want to play for the Bruins? The Eagles or the, or the Eagles? Like, was it was it Randall Cunningham? Because he's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> the Eagles are the Eagles. Right, is he, he's not dead, actually. <laughs> it was Reggie White. He's doing. Oh my yeah, God. it was terrible. <laughs> Oh God! No, the Glenn Fry, right? Glenn Fry would always be at the Ranger games, wouldn't he? And he died, right? Wait, didn't he's, he? He's dead. He did die. He did yeah, he die died recently. Yeah. Before remember, the last Rangers game he went to, he did pass. Yeah, remember, remember that moment in pop culture where everybody's like, "Oh man, I can't believe Glenn Fry." Bowie. Yeah, oh. it was one of those like Farrah Fawcett got. Was it her that got <laughs> overshadowed by uh, by Michael Jackson the next day? Like nobody ever really mourned Farrah Fawcett because it was like, oh Farrah Fawcett, uh. Michael Jackson died. <laughs> so poor thing. Like, we, we, rip, we, rip to both of them. Take a few minutes right now and yeah, mourn for Farrah Glenn Fawcett. Fry and mm. Farrah Fawcett. Poor little out Boy, Farrah Fawcett. in slow motion Fawcett running down Fry. the beach. Wait, that was Bo Derek, wasn't it? Yeah. But, uh, Farrah Fawcett was an angel, a mm-hmm. Charlie's angel, and now she's a real angel up in heaven. <laughs> Looking down on us. Boy. Having sex with Glenn Fry on the reg. That's some hot heaven gossip I got from my friend Gabriel. Right, until she hears over the intercom, uh, angels, y'all needed. Then they have to all assemble. Well, at least the dead ones. Are they all dead? No, Kate Jackson can't be dead. I don't know who the other one was. Dating yourself. I don't get why Farrah Fawcett would have sex with Glenn Fry if David Bowie's mm. right there. Mm. I don't get why the bottom of that coffee is chunky. You can put that right over there. All right. Thank you so much. Oh. Good job, Pret. It was Pret, right? Throw, That's a throw classic up during the cup. podcast, we're oh, going to use just it. chunks of coffee. <clears throat> uh, but you are a Bruins fan. How did you come about to find the love of hockey in your heart? Uh, my brother played. Uh, I played growing up, but as anybody who plays hockey uh, knows, that playing hockey isn't uh, cheap. you got to buy a ton of equipment. So I used to wear my brother's hand-me-downs when mm. I was a little kid. Uh, and then when it got to a point where his hand-me-downs didn't fit me anymore and I would have to buy my own equipment, my parents were like, so, dance! How do we feel about dance? <laughs> do you want to dance instead? Let's dance! Uh, now, and so then I stopped. Wow. You, were Bru- you, you were a Bruins fan during a time when it wasn't cool to be a Bruins fan? Because I feel like when, when, when they won the Cup, and maybe a little bit of time before that, then everybody in Boston discovered there was a hockey team again or got over themselves because they were angry about the te- how the team was managed. So was it was it not like where was where were the Bruins in the pecking order when you were? Uh, uh, they were on their they were pretty much close to to up. Like I didn't up, okay. I didn't know that yet because I was but a mere child. Right. Um, but yeah, it wasn't awful. It felt not great. Um, but winning the cup was was pretty sweet. And so now we're in this weird spot where we're, we refuse to admit we're rebuilding. We don't want to mm-hmm. rebuild. Yeah. We'd like to make it to the playoffs, but we've lost, what, seven out of the last eight, are, nine out of the last are you, ten. Like are you back to being fourth now? I mean, Patriots, obviously, mm. king of the mountain, mm. you know, deities. Yeah. Uh, uh, Red Sox, Celtics, I don't know where they are right now in, in the pecking order. I know the, the Celtics, Celtics will be Bruins climbing because little... the, the Celtics t- basically have my team, the Brooklyn Nets, uh, first round picks for the, you have all <laughs> the next the 20 years. <laughs> You're in Devils, Mets, Nets. Jets, Nets, Devils. Oh, wow, that the Devils really throw that off. Yeah. I wish there was a hockey team called, like, the... the the regrets that'd be perfect for you. <laughs> Nets, Nets. Yeah, the Devils are always sort of a, like like when you you're uh, hurting for money and you buy a lottery ticket each week and you're like maybe this year mm. it's a good chance I can get at least get that that fifty bucks for hitting mm. the, the the little special ball. I don't want to hear this this bitching. I mean, no. not for nothing. The Devils will have how many Stanley Cups when you were yeah. in your youth and your prime? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Also, they they beat my team. That's tr- what, what yeah. last yeah. week. Yeah, they, like, like, they, like, like four, five, six, week. seven, they, maybe all, eight or nine days ago. All, yeah. all forget. something like a couple days yeah. ago. Definitely not last More night. More than one day. <laughs> Is this where the New York Giants fan tells me that I should feel shame for having my teams? Like the Gi- the NFL literally just hands you a championship every few years. Or like you guys, the, the Mara family seems lonely. Let's Te- just give them something. Technically, the Patriots. <laughs> the Patriots hand them the, the, hand the Super us. Bowl. I think. <laughs> hand us, or the, or they can't knock it away when it's like right on the top of the helmet. It's mm. like like right there, and you can't That's just. That's fun. I'm so glad. It was really it. cool seeing both of you. Hey, thanks for coming uh, in. Fuck off, and I'm gonna go now. I have shit to do. I have a television show. No, but seriously, as do. a Devils fan, yeah, you had 
95. Mm -hmm. I was there too for that. 95. Right. Yep. 2000. Great run. 03. Uh -huh. And as recently as four years ago, mm -hmm. you were in the Stanley Cup final. Yep. So maybe just quit your whining. Well, you're, you're missing the you're missing the 2001 where we did some charity work and allowed Ray Bork to finally win a cup because he you know, obviously was in Boston and would never win. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, wasn't there a billboard in Boston <laughs> thanking him as well after that? <laughs> uh. <laughs> so they so they're probably like fourth now in the pecking order behind the Celtics again. Uh, yeah, I'd say it goes back and forth because the Celtics did admit they're rebuilding. We got Brad Stevens, who's dope, and mm -hmm. he's doing a pretty good job. So I think we're on. They're on the up and up. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Bruins, what the? Would, f would you say the Bruins, the the Boston's a town? I mean, Boston obviously a town that loves winners. I mean, you mm -hmm. couldn't find a Patriot fan during the eighties, but the uh, this is cute. Now he just drops. <laughs> Acts like he's gonna keep going. Uh, but you know, the the, the it seems like. There's always a, 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 a finite number of Bruins fans. They explode exponentially when the team is successful. I disagree. Does, yeah. does, does, does the tide about? regress? You're, does it regress really at all? Like, I completely like disagree. Boston is, we don't have like, uh, like we don't have college sports really other than hockey. Like we, mm -hmm. we don't have a, a, another really passionate fan. We have a very passionate hockey fan base. I'd say like Chicago, Boston. Yeah. New York is, the Rangers. I'd say the, you're describing the Rangers yeah. fan base that nobody yeah. really no, the, goes the, the, to Rangers the, games until they're like, no, everybody, oh, we good? Everybody, we good. everybody goes. They fill up the, but no one cares like in the city until mid-April. Yeah. yeah, honestly. Yeah, but like Boston, I do feel like the Rangers and McDonald's. Are like bad. you know, you know how like McDonald's always starts like getting a little panicky and closing stores and trying to rethink their product, and yet their sales are always like a hundred. A jillion dollars mm -hmm, every year because mm -hmm. people will go there regardless. The Rangers are that. The Rangers are people that will go there regardless. Like they so could like, be the worst team in hockey for 15 years, and it's still going to be a bunch of guys giving their little suit friends tickets to go to the games. I went to a, a, a Devils Bruins game very recently. All right, and I I saw uh, children, like a lot of children at the game, mm -hmm. and it was uh, it's been a really long time since I've been to a hockey game and, and seen that many kids because. In Boston, when you're when you do well, they the <clears throat> tickets go up. Same thing with like the Red Sox. Kind of a shame that you don't see as many kids at the games because it's so expensive to bring your kids. And so it was nice to go to a, a shitty team's game, <laughs> right. uh, And and see how many children were able to come and enjoy because tickets were twelve dollars. Right. So what you're saying is is like as a Boston fan, it's really tough for you because all your teams are winners. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm saying it was right. nice to go to like a team that sucks right. uh, and know that you'd be able to enjoy the yeah. youth. And really, there's nothing around the youth. Nothing more inspiring than youth. to see little kids walk, running around with the mark of the beast on them. You know, mm. indoctrinate them. Yeah, into, into true. Satanism and also, really like, possible. I like that when you know the music that you guys play is all like Fetty Wap <laughs> and everything you would expect at a New Jersey hockey game. I walked in like I actually oh, don't know what yeah. vibe I'm getting in it's here, awesome. and every it was like, mm -ts, mm -ts, mm -ts, yeah. put yeah. your fucking hands up. I'm like, are we at the club? I don't. <laughs> nothing. I don't understand. Nothing gets the crowd more hype at a hockey game than baby wants to come my way. You know that was amazing. Thank you. It's wow. A, it's well, anytime I put my hands over my face like this, I can do a myriad of impressions. Uh, here comes the bane. 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 Yeah, of course. As you know, everybody does the bane. You got a bane? I do have a bane. <laughs> what a lovely, lovely voice. <laughs> You just do a Jimmy Stewart with your hands. <laughs> well, that's the other thing too. Zoo, zoo's new, new, new listeners to the podcast will also learn that while I do it a, a variety of impressions, it's only about nine of them, and it's just different variations of those nine. That's For example, okay. the example I always give: Cream with the Frog, and and my George Lucas. I don't know if Jar Jar Binks is really the character <laughs> that we want to malign in this film. There's a lot to love. Uh, fun fact: You could also probably do a Jason Gay with that. With That's that true as well. He's got a, he's got a similar it's, Kermit the yeah, Frog. Little variations reflection. of a theme. What's your best impression? Do you have? I one? don't have. I'm really bad at impressions. Really? Yeah, but my producers uh, insist on always doing. Everyone on our staff has a uh, has a Ringo Starr impression. Oh, it's just like a it's the common it's bond that we share. It's our breakfast at Duffy Tiffany's. knows. It's yeah. like a slow like, like but only when he aloof. only when he talks about uh, only Ringo Starr talking about uh, what disc he prefers if it's CD <laughs> or DVD that's all we oh Ringo what are your so, thoughts on CD versus DVD it's gotta be a, a, a little stuffy and, and yeah. like, but also the, it's the uh -huh. emphasis on the, on the other syllable David, yeah, yeah. yeah. member of the Beatles oh there, there, it, oh, right. there it is welcome it's just like, so you now officially work for Garbage Time oh, welcome oh, wow, to the sick. team it's great to be on board yeah. that's, a, that's a DVD. great that's a great interview <laughs> just like you walk in, you have everything prepared. You have like your resume is seventy five like, pages long. Give me your long. Ringo Starr. <laughs> right now, do it, do it. I'm I only do a this. I only do a McCartney. Oh, get your ass out of here. <laughs> your ESPN material. 
Um, Wait, so in Boston, when you were a kid. Uh huh. We're jumping all over the place. I love it. No, I want to. I, so. <laughs> That's the show. I like it. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> like, I know people from Boston who sorry. loved, like, Steve Grogan when they were a kid. But, like, did anyone even care about the Patriots until, like, 02? Right? Yeah. But, like, the Bruins. People have always loved the it's Bruins. It's an institution in yeah. Boston. Yeah. And as a hockey player yourself. Yes. Well, that's that's a fact we're saying. Right. Sure. Who nearly <clears throat> nearly made the New York Riveters roster. That's yeah. right. So I can't close, tell so you close. how close she was so to close. making the team. To, to, set, to set it up for those uh, at home, uh, Garbage Time did a segment in which Katie played goalie for the no, National not goalie. Win- no, no, no. Oh, no. You played that would up front? Be, that, so then I would have died. You, you were just uh, up front. You were a forward? She yeah. was a sniper. You were a sniper. I was on the ice for about five minutes. Why didn't they put you Like literally on the ice. On the ice. I laid down on the ice. Literally. So I hadn't skated in a really long time, and we were supposed to get an hour or, like, 30 minutes of warm-up so mm-hmm. I could, like, get my sea legs. Uh, and then I, we didn't because production, you know, anybody who's worked on a TV show knows that you have a schedule, and then just fuck that schedule. You're, <laughs> you just everything goes wrong. And so I didn't have any time. And at the end of practice, when these girls are, like, waiting to leave, women, sorry, these women are waiting to leave, mm, yeah. I get out on the ice, and they're like, okay, let's hurry this up. And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I'll just try to shoot the puck. And then right. fell on my, like, I hadn't skated in years. Oh, it was a shame, too, like because, story. honestly, like, she, she probably would have been on the team. For if she sure, would have gotten like sure. twenty minutes of warm up time. That's yeah, a, that, all that's I needed the was twenty more minutes. That's the difference between making a complete fool of yourself and mm-hmm. being a professional women's hockey player. And right. making money twenty minutes playing hockey. That's right. Yeah, You're yeah. stipend. Yeah. What did you think of the women's <laughs> league? The uh, the jerseys for the Riveters were some of the best hockey hockey jerseys. Straight straight yeah. full stop. Good logo. Hockey jerseys in in, in the world yeah. right now. The Rosie the Riveter logo. What did you think of the women's league? Awesome. Yeah. They're they're great and they're so nice. Mm-hmm. And I thought they'd be like, why are you here? We're like why why are you making a joke of our league? Mm. And I was really conscious of that cuz that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to show people right. how great the league is and how awful uh, I am at sports. <laughs> and I think we achieved that. We we got that goal. And they, but you know, sometimes you worry that you're going to do something and someone's like, "Wow, you're making fun of us." Mm-hmm. But the women were so nice and like taught me how to fight and they, like AK threw me on the ice and Punched me. And you almost killed her. With my skate, by yes. accident, by accident. Yeah. It's just a natural habit that when I get thrown onto the ground, I like kick my legs up right. in the air, and then I realize afterwards you have a sharp uh, weapon attached right. to the bottom of your yeah. feet, and you might have just kicked someone in the jugular and caused her premature death. It would, have, it would have sent a good message, though, as like, look, you want to fight me? Yeah, I, I'm going to slice karate. you. <laughs> I'm from Boston, so I'll yeah. just slice you. I have Ginzu bitch. feet. Mm. What? <laughs> you, so, Lozo and I are mostly men. I was wondering what yeah. your thoughts were Is about. Is this up for debate? Because I'd love <laughs> to spend the next few minutes debating. I mean, the now. genetic tests haven't come back, but what, like. What qualifies <laughs> us? Technically, I've never fought in a war. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in fairness, we might have been born at the wrong time. Wait, no, we weren't. There were totally, totally wars for like the last 20 yeah, years. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> I think we might currently be at war. But it was yeah. harder to get sure? involved with them. They didn't get picked. Like, you know, kickball. Like, they used to pick people like in kickball and make them go to war. This time it was much more voluntary, and we had other things to do, like NES. I was and... so busy that day. Like, honestly, if, if I, if, you know how you have a schedule, and you want to keep that schedule, then the schedule goes crazy. Like, if I could have just gotten to the, uh, you know, the draft office 20 minutes earlier, yeah. I would have been the best soldier in the world. You think so? This, this is good. This is a good right. comparison. Yeah. I see a, what you're doing This here. is a callback to yeah, earlier in the call show. Back. To three minutes yeah. ago. So it's a mean, pretty bad callback. Let's, I, I let's move been, on. I would have been like a, like a pre... <laughs> Pre Super Soldier Serum, Steve Rogers, except fat. The word is how serum I would have been, probably. Oh, I thought you were wearing a Captain America shirt, but you were wearing a Winnipeg Jets shirt. Right. Similar. It's, Similar, a, it's uh... a hockey podcast. Yeah, that's Greg. true. Sorry. And you're wearing, you know, a front office Gary Bettman look. <clears throat> My no, point is, in calling. It's a Twitter sweatshirt. Thank so. you. Oh, and I was wearing, I was wearing a oh, hoodie, a too. It isn't. It just looks like it. Is it I not? bought it before. <laughs> It's nice, though. Put a bird on it. Oh, fuck you. It's just a sweatshirt. <laughs> Put a bird on it. Put a bird on it. Um, oh, I was going to ask you, though, Katie, was so, like, all right, as a woman. Oh, Christ. How do you feel that league should be marketed? Like, do you think that they, that they need to go, like, what, are, what aren't they doing right now to crack the proverbial uh, glass ceiling made of ice that is no, marketing the NWHL the to, uh, to women? Speak for all women right now. Go. Yeah, I know, Please, right? Go. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I'd say on the surface of it, there's a. Uh, they have to start out small. So there's, what, four teams in mm-hmm. the league? Uh, and I think that it's okay for them to not maybe come out fully trying to make the push right now with four teams. I think that would yeah. be hard to get national interest in a four-team league. But I think if they start small, they do what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Danny Ryland, uh, the commissioner, is a great face for that league. Oh, yeah. She's she's well-spoken. She's <laughs> nice. She's uh, beautiful, not that it's relevant. But she's like super talented and she, the way she speaks about it and the way she talks about how, like, women 
should be paid to play sports right. and it's not that complicated is actually re- really engaging to listen to. So I mean, you're saying in juxtaposition with Gary Bettman, yeah. someone you'd oh, like yeah. to hear uh, talk. Well, so Gary and... Bettman, also beautiful, <laughs> uh, but not so <laughs> well-spoken or right. talented. For a man his age. Yeah. No, yeah, Absolutely. I would look at that face I would, for... I would tap that. Ever. Yeah, <laughs> I would... Fit, just the discomfort in your face what? having to say that sentence. No, no, well, I, I mean... Would, Tap. It's, I would I would hit that. Oh, is, is tap not the word anymore the kids use? Is it mm. is it hit? I don't know. Is it smash? I think it's smush. Destroy. Smush. I think was that Jersey Shore? Wait, is that is that why they call them Smush Parker? <laughs> I don't know. Bettman's a bit I of a grenade. There you go. There you go. God, Bettman's a fucking word. <laughs> yeah, as far as commissioners go, like to finally have a, a it's the first commissioner I've ever seen or met that I'm like, well, I guess you know I like Adam Silver, but like. She's great. Yeah. She's nice. She actually cares about her players. And you worry, too, that like when a league gets too big, obviously you have to lose a little bit of that. But I think mm-hmm. if they grow at the right pace and then they make the push, uh, I think they have a real chance to be successful. I like Adam Silver a lot as a commissioner because uh, I, th- I feel like the NBA can kind of be a chaotic place sometimes. And I, and I always feel like... Like, Dad's got this. Yeah. Like, if there was a flat tire on the interstate, like, Adam Silver could probably change it. Yeah, you know, whereas Roger Goodell would be like, it's not flat, we're fine, just keep driving. <laughs> keep driving, hit that woman. Like, it's, that's, that's how Goodell commissions his league. <laughs> and Bettman would be like, maybe we should stop the car for a couple months and never start it again until somebody pays us to yes. come fix this tire. Exactly. I'm not afraid to sit here for a real long time. This is good. Do, uh, do baseball. Mr. Do baseball before. Mr. I don't Bat- have enough about Manfred Mr. Bettman, what's wrong with the car? Why is it stalled? Ask the players why it's stalled. Maybe we should talk to the people who made the car. It's not my- talk to the tire. See why it doesn't want to run. I told it to run. It do said you, no. Do you think, uh, and, and stick, because again, I'm not trying to, you know, it's rare that we have women in this room, mm-hmm. to be quite honest with you. Or any room. That's yeah, true. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, so much Star Wars talk. Um, the, uh, the, do you feel like, uh, as, a, as a hockey fan, that the NHL does a decent job marketing to women or not marketing to women, or they don't know that women like hockey? Because I feel like that sometimes is the case. The tough thing is, uh, uh, because I'm a football fan as well, I'd almost rather the 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 way the NHL does it. Oh, and if they, they're not doing like, ooh, we're doing ladies night, uh, come by, free manicures, uh, mm. we'll give you one martini, <laughs> and uh, then you'll be sexually harassed for the entire game uh, in the stands. <laughs> oh, you've been to a Jets game. Yeah, like, oh, have a pink jersey, uh, we'll charge you a ton for it. One dollar of each jersey goes to breast cancer. <laughs> like, I'd rather them not pander. If the NHL just ignores and just treats fans as fans, that to me is better. That's what, what doing about the, the... Corey, remember the Corey Perry thing last year at the Winnipeg Jets game? The fans, oh, the fans what? were chanting Ka- uh, Katy Perry, Perry, Katie Katie Perry, Perry at it. Yeah. and someone called Gary Bettman on it like a couple weeks later, and he was like, "Oh, just calling him a woman's the same thing as calling someone a sieve." It was like, <laughs> no, "No, not so much." It's actually a little not bit different. So much. Like I just I, like Gary Bettman. Like Roger Goodell feels like he's intentionally evil. Mm. Yeah, I feel like Gary Bettman's like unknowingly just a dumbass, dumb, right? He's like, just he a just dumbass. Doesn't, he's just like an old dude who just yeah. doesn't get it. While Roger Goodell's like a robot trained right. yep. to take the life out of women, right? And just hates the world. The thing that's crazy to me is the amount of money these men make. It's not that hard to very quickly be taught how to say the right thing. Right, just, just look at one person next to you of the 90 who get paid to work on your staff and say, hey, someone asks me about this Katy Perry, Corey Perry thing. What should uh, I say? Yeah. That's it. And then when yeah. someone says, oh, well, just say uh, that you respect women, the league respects women, and you can't be responsible for all fans, but that you're disappointed in their actions. Yeah. That's it. Very easy. Right. But no. Calling it's, a woman, right. calling them a woman is basically like they, saying you're a fucking sissy. They need that, they need that White House, <laughs> they need that White House press secretary uh, gene mm-hmm. where like, they're like, uh, you know, uh, uh, is the president aware that there's a box of plutonium that spilled out <laughs> in a lake in the middle of New York? And, and then the guy's like... Well, the president's very concerned about boxes and their construction. Uh, yeah. uh, so the rest of it, we'll have to, we'll uh, have to check on we'll that. We'll have to look at that. Yeah, it's like great. It, honestly, as a female sports fan, I've gotten to the point where I'm not even asking for that much anymore. Mm-hmm. Like with the whole Greg Hardy thing in the NFL last year, it was like, I, I get it. You're a bad guy, and you were suspended, and we, we were supposed to believe you went through these programs and whatever. And your first day out, two minutes into a seven-minute speech, you're like, guns blazing, I want to fuck Giselle. <laughs> but he doesn't even call her Giselle, he just calls her Tom Brady's yeah. wife. Which, like, I could yeah. strangle you. Double you don't down. even have to remember her last name. She just goes by Giselle. You're the worst. And, like, all I'm asking is just fake it better. Yeah. So with the, with the, with the NHL, it's like, 
They're good yeah, at you don't it. have to beat. I don't want you to go up to every fan and be like, "Don't chant Katy Perry." Here's why that's problematic. Mm-hmm. I just want you to, when somebody asks you about it, and you're the head of the league, to not say, "Yeah, who fucking cares?" I think, that's why right? I think they chanted that because they can't chant "pussy." To be quite honest, <laughs> I don't know. That's why your Greg Hardy. I mean, your Greg Hardy video, I thought, like, channeled a lot of that feeling of like just just women watching this this charade. And this just oblivious circus that goes on with some of these leagues and the way and, and the way they approach this stuff is like, you know, like, you know, Jerry Jones with the Manziel stuff. Like, it's like, oh, I think yeah. he's got, I think got my, that boy's got some talent. And it's just yeah. like, yeah, he's got a real talent, according to the police reports. Oh, the yeah. talent really decides how bad the, the actual oh, yeah. action is. Someone sure. needs to graph it. I've tried, right. but I, I'm not good at math, so... It's tough to know exactly what the scale is, but it's it exists. Yeah. How good you are versus how much you're right. worth but it. Like Eli Manning could like push a school bus full of kids off of the bridge and mm. like ah. could he? Ah. Eli half, Manning half is like full? the luckiest half. quarterback oh, boy. ever. The, yeah, I know oh, boy. you think he's elite. <laughs> uh, you're wrong. Um, so that's just yeah, this, that depends. 35, is, 35 touchdown passes. Is, last is, is, wow. is, is Odell wow. Beckham the bus that'll be able to leap higher than any man can leap to <laughs> catch those errant passes? He, oh, actually, Odell Beckham will fly and catch the bus with one hand and put it back <laughs> on the bridge to save Eli's ass. Without well, stick him, Eli Manning ain't shit. Oh! Now, so now, now we're calling well, OBD that, into question here? It just everybody. everybody that that and nepotism. Um, <laughs> but you go. You I, want to, I want to pause on something about about your. You said about about fans. I mean, fans are vile, and you brought up the Devils game, and that's the most interesting juxtaposition to me in life right now. Is that the Devils are trying to recruit this kitty core of, of young fans to go to the games, their parents, and go see the hockey thing, and yet a scant like six rows above them are the guys chanting, as we've mentioned in this podcast yes, before, yes. Uh, you know, fl- Rangers suck, Flyers swallow, and Crosby watches. Mm, and it's whoa, like, how- that is a picture I just got. I'm going to close my eyes and spend some time with <laughs> yeah, that. There's one. a lot. For- there's like Crosby a train. would be the guy who watches. Yeah. And there's- <laughs> oh, God, he yeah. so would be. <laughs> but there's like, a, there's like, it's a weird time for hockey in the sense that I feel like there's a scratching and clawing, and we saw this with all the emails that were released recently, scratching and clawing to keep the old school, school aesthetic of fighting and brutality and blood mm-hmm. on the ice and the nasty nastiness when you go to the game and it's rivalry night and blah 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 and the f- entire it's rivalry night by well, the way it's a terrible idea by the way yeah. it's like rivalry flyers panthers that's <laughs> the game we have tonight you're, you're in so, television oh there's so much storyline <laughs> here like, oh there fucking is it it's not a rivalry stop Yarby Yarby spent one year here oh man yeah. and now what's he's back? he gonna do but that's the real thing about God. about the rivalry stuff is like they it's 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 really kind of like square peg round hole is mm-hmm. that the way it's supposed to go? Because round round peg square hole, you could probably get you could it make, in. You could still. force that in, right? I wasn't really good at. Wait, wait how, how do we transition from Sydney Crosby watching the Philadelphia Flyers <laughs> swallow semen <laughs> to oof, rivalry oof. night? <laughs> to square peg round holes. I cut you holes. off. No, keep going. Uh, so you've got oh, the so NHL anyway. trying to go back to like the, yeah, the, yeah, the old school hot. Yeah, hockey. and 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 it does it like. I feel like society has shifted. You want to bring your kid to a game. You don't want yeah. to hear about how the Flyers are swallowing and Crosby's in the corner. You know, yeah, pull- counterpoint, though. Yeah. I, I went to games as a kid, and I heard all of that. Me, too. That's why I ended up this way. Exactly. And look at we've got look a, at we've got We're standing in a little room broadcasting yep. to the whole world. We made it. Uh, yeah, I, I get the, like, sheltering your kids from the, the, the bad stuff. But at the same time, like, it also it, it offers an opportunity for a parent to turn to their son and be like, don't be these assholes right. when you grow up yeah like point. this they're chanting katie perry here's why that's not okay teach mm-hmm. your kid that lesson and then enjoy the game like i, I get that mm-hmm. it's a quick, bad environment but quick story my sister uh is a devil's fan and she was a huge marty Bredor fan and me and my my dad and my sister went to a game a ranger devil game and uh Bredor gave up a goal these ranger fans in back of us started just you know doing what ranger fans do mm-hmm. and and hauling yeah, obscenities and, and calling him you know he sucks and this whole <laughs> thing right and then and then Leaving so the game early <laughs> my <laughs> my sister who must have been about 14 at the time turns around to the ranger fans and just starts going shut the fuck up you shut the fuck up you she's a great fucking goalie you shut the fuck up you fucking slut i love that and you and say slut? yeah <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a woman oh good. and this and so like me and my dad are both like Bleh? and uh <laughs> seeing seeing uh his his daughter become a woman Your in front of his eyes right. that's yeah. crazy yeah. <laughs> and so and so what then happens as she sits back down is uh one of the Ranger fans throws, tried throws a beer at her. They right? tried to throw a beer I at her. Yeah, full beer. There's no way. Uh, tries to throw a beer at her, misses her, uh-huh. hits a guy in front of us. He gets up, and it's like the abomination from Incredible Hulk. Like he's just this gigantic, massive mountain of a man. Turns around 
And it turns out this guy is an off-duty New York City oh, detective. Shit. So he gets hit with the beer. So those Ranger fans are gone. And this became, a, like as you said, a teaching moment. Yeah. One, maybe not so much with the language. Maybe not slut. Maybe we don't yeah. slut <laughs> to a and, stranger. But, but two, just let it be known that eventually, you know, if you mind your own and, and, and don't uh, act that way, don't throw the beer. Mm-hmm. Just yell up until the point when you might throw the beer. Yeah. That uh, then you won't hit the abomination yeah. NYPD detective or, and get kicked out of the game. Or I, I feel like we're, we're we're sort of not focusing on the guilt of your sister in this situation <laughs> because fans were yelling that somebody sucked. Right. And then really she instigated. But no, she somebody's got to stand up for Marty. She entered. Somebody has to say, "Excuse me, would. he does not suck." She, Actually, he's right. great. She entered the marketplace of ideas, speaking her native tongue as a New Jerseyan. <laughs> uh-huh. And then these people decided to ex- escalate the situation by throwing a projectile at her. The two, oh. the two biggest crimes in that story is is the slut shaming and the wasting of the beer. Uh, the and also the lack of video, because I'd love to see a fourteen year old be like, "Shut up, slut! Right. I love Marty." <laughs> that would be amazing. The Jersey accent that would though. now go viral. <laughs> As fuck. Oh, she was so As angry. Point. She was really angry. But so I, the, I think to your point that uh, people now are so. I mean, I'm not like going down the whole pussification of America mm-hmm. train, but people are so concerned about oh, my child went to this game and right. heard the word shit, yeah. and that I should be able to take my kid wherever I want and shelter but, him from. It's like germs. You have to expose your kid to them so that they can build up a tolerance to them. Your kid is not going to forever go through life without hearing the word shit. But you can teach your kid, that person said that, does it make it okay for you to say that? Say that and I'll smack you. I don't know, maybe that's how you parent. That's how I would parent. Oh, I like that. Old school, like, nuns just, with like, rulers. Stop being so concerned about what I'm doing. Like, I was at that game... Not last night, whenever this airs. <laughs> at, that, at that Jersey, the, the Devil's Merry Bruins Christmas, game. Merry Christmas, everyone, by the way. I, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I was at that, the Devil's Bruins game, and I stood up and was like, fuck, put the goal in the net, Bolesky! He goes, Jesus Christ. I was right there. Uh, and, and people turned around and, like, looked their kids, like, held them closer. <laughs> like, I'm not going to kill your child. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. It genuinely just slipped out of my mouth because of the anger of, like, how many breakaway goals you just missed? I mean, there's at least two. I mean, the game was so long ago that I can barely yeah, remember you're right. what it was happened. A couple Mommy, ago. what's a Matt Bolesky? <laughs> Don't worry about it, honey. Um, no. But just, like, you know, I, will, I, I get your point, but at the same time. I, 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 I agree with you, but I also think that there is a level of parental responsibility that's gone by the wayside. I'll give you the best example that I can. In this world of ours, we have films that involve costume superheroes. Some of these films are for children, Hmm. and some of these films are a bit coarser. Mm. Uh, Some of these films, in fact, are rated R. So if you take your child to see Deadpool, (laughs) and then your reaction is, I can't believe how vulgar it was. I can't believe Ryan Reynolds was getting pegged in the movie at one point by his girlfriend. Oh, that happens? Yeah, it does. It's great. Uh, what does pegged mean in that situation? Pegged sex? means pegged. Like, they had sex? It's a sex she, montage. She wears... Spoiler. What? Yeah. It's a it sex... Shirts. It's a sex... Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? So it's a, I haven't seen it yet. Wait, is this real life? Yeah, it is. There's a... There's, <laughs> for those yeah. of, who haven't seen it, there's a sex montage in which it shows him and his girlfriend bonding, and they have sex Bondaging? on every... Bondaging? No, 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 bonding. They have sex on every <laughs> yeah, holiday and celebrate each holiday in a different way. So the pegging uh, joke, sight gag, is uh, National Women's Day. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That's great. But That's if you kind take of a your spoiler. if you take your it's kid to that spoiler, yeah. Probably, yeah if you take your kid to that flick and all of a sudden you I mean, it's rated R like I, I saw when I saw Batman v Superman colon Dawn of Justice How over the weekend was that? Was it bad? Well, let's calm down on that for a second oh, oh uh, so it was good uh, hold, hold on Just stop it uh, the uh, attack Greg someone someone had don't a, let him complete a thought <laughs> someone had a toddler there like someone literally had a toddler well, that there that person is a fucking moron yeah so don't I think there's a uh, pr- but they think that it's Superman and Batman so you can bring it and then no, you know the scene in the movie reason. where like uh, uh, you know oh, Bru- don't do it don't Bruce do Wayne it. is at uh, his his parents grave spoiler they get killed Whoa. again what yeah <laughs> what you I am sh- out of here listen look, uh, here's how I feel about this film Okay, uh, I liked it. I wouldn't begrudge anyone who didn't. I wouldn't begrudge anyone who would say that they've made every possible bad choice they could in the making of the film. I wouldn't begrudge anyone saying that they should scrap the entire DC cinematic universe and start over again. They should just make Marvel 2. Okay. <laughs> Give me a second Marvel. Marvel, an, an alternate universe Marvel yeah. for yeah. DC. Right. Yes, please. I, uh, 
I liked it. I have to admit, I like I like Affleck. I hear the thing about it. Like one of the things that people don't like about these characters is that they're like, well, Superman would never do that, and Batman would never do that. I'm like, these are fictional characters. No one walked out of there will be blood, being like, well, Daniel Plainview would never make a reference to milkshakes because he's lactose intolerant. But they're but they're fictional characters who, because of the amount of movies and books and things, they've taught us this is their storyline, and then you can't take their storyline and go, eh, fuck all that shit. Yes, you years totally ago. can. Start over. You totally can. You no, can, you, you can, can take the character no. wherever you want to do. Right. Batman's no, killed people for no, no, Christopher here. Reeve Superman threw three supervillains down a if giant crevasse make, in the if you fortress make, of solitude and killed them. So you don't get to get Superman fans and Batman fans' money by putting their name on it. If you want to make a, mm. a blank versus blank, sorry, blank v blank colon, <laughs> colon couple other words. Right. Uh, if you want to make that movie and have them not act like Batman or Superman and not abide by the rules of their own origin stories, mm-hmm. then just pick Pick two brand new superheroes. Make up two more. There's a huge market for well, that. Why can't we just be like, oh, you're like, oh, well, Batman would never kill anybody. Well, this one does. Well, Batman would never use a gun. Well, this one did to kill this someone. This one? It's just the one guy. No, oh, yeah. it's different. It's ben Affleck doesn't get to reinvent Batman. Sure he does. No, he what if you went to go, But Adam West wait, is not Christian Bale. Like, they're all you, different characters. What if you went oh to go God, see a James? So, you've never been more wrong in your life. Yeah. So, we still have time left. Imagine going to see a James Bond movie. <laughs> yes. And, like, James Bond movie just, say that. just started, like, murdering children. Yeah. And you were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah. He's but a that's, fictional that's, character. That's yeah, imagine. Brosnan's imagination yeah, yes. of that's how he likes right. to act. He's yeah. James Bond. Oh, yeah. Imagine it's not Batman. his James Bond. It's our James Bond, and you will assimilate or you're out. Yeah. Imagine going to a James Bond movie and finding out that he actually grew up in a giant country mansion uh, with a caretaker who could booby trap the place like Home Alone when the bad guys come. Oh, that's right. It's called Skyfall. They did reinvent part of the character in Skyfall. Oh, well, no. It's and in the next the one, character. they made Blofeld his childhood best friend. Like it was Muppet Babies. <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not start disparaging Muppet Babies yeah. in maybe my presence. Maybe we leave the Muppet... Maybe you keep Muppet <laughs> Babies' name out, Joe Mouse. This little How baby James Bond, little baby Blofeld. You just see Nanny's feet next but to them. But here's the thing. So... I, I have not seen uh, the uh, epic film Superman v. Batman colon Dawn of Justice, Clear but... Time. But... Uh, what, ha, in what world does the uh, superhuman alien... Yes. Mm-hmm. ...lose to the rich guy? Mm. I don't. I need you to explain. He Are they on a planet though. with a with a red sun? Like how how is this possible? Is there kryptonite involved? Well, how could it even be close to even well, matched? I mean, of course there's kryptonite involved. It's the only way you could beat Superman. But okay. yeah, I'm not going to give away anything. But I'll say this: it's it's based on the fight between the two in the uh, Dark Knight Returns. Oh, so it's referencing an old it's thing. It's referencing that did happen, a so Frank you're, Miller you're, thing. Yeah, right, and right. It, it's there is kryptonite involved. And ba- the reason Batman would always beat Superman in their Batman v Superman battles is that he's smarter. He'd outsmart him. Superman's just Superman kind of dumb. Superman can melt him with his eyes. He doesn't need to get close to him where the I kryptonite know. is. Ah, but there, therein lies the problem. Like, melting him with his eyes would mean that Superman would kill. And Superman... Well, you just said Super- he could kill. Su- Superman cares more about humanity than any other superhero, and that's why people were so pissed off no. at the end of Man of See, Steel. Like, you're using the Superman narrative that fits your argument at the moment. You just said earlier of he course. could kill and throw people right. down a crevasse. That's right, I don't like did. the guy who plays Superman. Henry Cavill? I'm out on him. Here's yeah. the problem with Henry Cavill, and present company excluded... Wow. Uh, Henry Cavill's losing his hair at a rapid rate, and it's very distracting because Superman, you expect him to have Superman a giant Superman would never quaff. lose his hair. Right, he can't Superman. because it's all... Superman would have to shave his face to keep his hair from growing all the way down it because he has so much hair. In Superman 4... Like his whole, like his, wow, he'd have to yeah. shave his forehead of like, right. I can't help it. My in hair Superman is so 4, Cole, in the quest for peace, oh uh, they actually had a, tr- a, a strand of Superman's hair holding up a giant anvil in a museum because that is how much tensile strength it had. Yeah, no, so if he loses his cattle. hair... It would, like, fall to the ground and probably crack the earth. Yeah. This is a good story. This is, yeah. This, like, this is getting into, like, Kevin Smith territory <laughs> of, of, like, what Superman could and couldn't do. Like, Can impregnating I, a woman. I, and, like, the whole thing where, like, you know, we, his, we did a, his organism yeah, would his blow out the sperm. back of her body How's or Eisenberg? He's great. I don't. Mm. You see, a lot of people are like that. He's basically playing... Uh, he's basically playing. Uh, uh, in every movie he's in, he's playing Mark Jesse Zucker- Eisenberg. Yeah. He's right. playing whoever he's, he's playing. He's playing Mark Zuckerberg if Mark Zuckerberg tried to do a Heath Ledger impression. He, he makes it hard oh. for me to suspend disbelief. Like, I am immediately aware of mm-hmm. the fact that he's acting. Yeah. I'm not like, oh, wow, that's Lex <laughs> Luthor. I'm like, oh, wow, why is the Facebook guy here? With no spoilers <laughs> attached, I will say that his plot. To get Superman to V Batman, V him right up in his V, 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 him, v him in his P. Is, is being like Put his V in his P. Um, I will say that his plan to get Batman to V him is uh, is really 
psychotic. Like it's it's it, this movie's got some darkness. So to Eisenberg it. didn't write the f- film. I don't know if anyone told you he didn't come up with that himself. It <laughs> doesn't actually get to be in his merit See, column. I didn't realize that. I thought I was yeah, watching. Yeah, no, a it's not like hey, Jesse, bring good. whatever you got. Uh, we're just gonna let you be Luther. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Wonder Woman's great. She has a, a really like, hashtag feminism. She has she has a rock and guitar theme, which I thought was a bold choice. Okay. And actually, the only time my theater oh. my theater hated the movie, I think, and like the only time they came to life was when she showed up for the big fight at the end. It's already spoiled in the trailer. Uh, and then there was it was a weirdly balanced movie because all of the humor happened in like the last half an hour. The rest of the movie is like this dire. There's like Senate hearings and shit about Superman, and like oh, all of the funny stuff exciting. and Wonder Woman showing up all, all happens in the last. Hearings. So you walk out kind of like, oh, that was all right. And then the first, you know, three and then you remember of the, the first <laughs> three quarters of the movie and say, ah, actually. Should have left. That, that's in the entire post movie. Is him saying, "Well, actually, he can do whatever he wants because in this in this canon, uh, what they're using is mm-hmm. like, that's mm-hmm. the, I don't want to go see a movie. It's with poetic you justice, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and so actually they're allowed to do whatever. Technically, the foreshadowing. You're that guy it's poetic, on Twitter. It's poetic actually, license. Actually, it's poetic actually, license. Yeah, it's not poetic well, justice. That I means that someone yeah, will get their just desserts. Fuck you. I just yeah. listen to Kendrick Lamar on my way Yeah. Oh, stars and I don't know. My Neil deGrasse. Well, I don't know. My Neil deGrasse. My Neil deGrasse Tyson sounds a lot like my every other black guy. Yeah. Black Black Doctor for the Simpsons. <laughs> That's good. You should uh, you should really investigate that. Yeah, I really you should. should. You should take uh, some time unpacking that with yourself. But my favorite room. thing about about the Batman the Superman colon Dawn and Justice movie was imagining that. Affleck's character was in fact his same character from Gone Girl and that's like post mm. Gone Girl return he's rich off the money of the book he sold he gets the whole thing and now he's just decided to fight crime because you know she drove him that crazy mm. that's my theory bitches man yeah <laughs> They fuck everything. Up. They a be tripping, mm-hmm. b be shopping, mm-hmm. and c fuck everything. Right, up. and nothing but hoes and tricks as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. From what I've heard. Yeah. Oh yeah, we ain't mm-hmm. nothing but. So um, hoes so, and so tricks. hockey, huh? Mm-hmm. So real quick, back Speaking to hockey. Tricks, hat Speaking tricks. of hat tricks. Oh, oh my goodness! My God! Last hockey thing I wanted to ask you, Katie, all on this hockey podcast was: you were a goalie growing up. No, I wasn't. Why? How you wore goalie I was gear. To tell you that I no, I didn't. What? What are you talking about? You were never a goalie. No. When, when, why were you never a goalie? Why do you think I was a goalie? Well, I think it's because you said you wore, you wore your brother's gear, and I yeah. just assumed that meant, like, goalie gear. Why would you assume that? I meant, like, well, because we, we obviously pads, call it a, pads. We obviously call it a kit. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. No, I don't call it a kit a at all. Soccer team? <laughs> just kidding, just... Are we talking about soccer right now? As a hockey player, oh, yep. who in the league do you respect? Who do you love? Who are the players that you enjoy watching in the National Hockey League hmm. today? Non-Bruins. Non-Bruins. I'm, I'm big on Ghost Bear right now. Oh, Mainly Shane because, Gossespear. I mean, A, he's, he's, he's fucking awesome. great. Great player. Every game I watch, I'm mm-hmm. like, that was an amazing play by him. There isn't a single game that I'm not, like, impressed by something he did. Mm-hmm. I don't remember who they were playing, but remember when he, like, dove to keep the puck in the, in the zone? That was right, fucking right, right. Right. incredible. Detroit? I think yeah, so. over time no. with that game. Yeah. yeah. He, but also his name is a combination of two emojis. That's right. And I think that everyone's name should be a combination. Like yours would be Wish, so maybe it'd be like a star. It'd be like a and then star. An, a, I don't know what Inski. Inski. Oh, like, like yeah, an yeah. Uh, the, the, the letter in, N. The, they have the in one. It says in. in. And then also uh, a, a guy skiing. skiing. Oh, my God. Wow, that was easier than I ever would imagine. I know, it and yours would be a clown minus the B plus an L. It's easy. I don't yeah, know. It would be the, a down arrow for low. Yep. And then uh, the Zoe. Zoe. Like Jerry Alonzo Morning's face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that emoji exists, actually. Does it's it? It's part of the new. Do you have an emoji name, too? No. So, Nolan would be the word no. The word no. I guess. Uh-huh. And then maybe a land. Right. Well, no, or like a. Jeremy like, Lin's face. Even yeah. It's not spelled land. the same, but it's. Or maybe an LAN connection. Like connection, a, like, like, a, a, like, a, like a server. Like a laptop, yeah. Right, yeah. Mm. That's good. Mm. That should be this an easy fun. emoji. They don't have a taco really yet, but you can get an LAN network one. Yeah, they do. They have they have so many that like, <laughs> oh, I'm glad you have seven different computers because I couldn't just get the point across with the one. <laughs> this podcast has been a lot of us complaining about stuff. I the world it, sucks. I find Why it a challenge. Everything, so bad? everything is bad and dumb. Uh, I find it a challenge to find emojis that I need to find in order to express myself. Uh, you know, and that's why the eggplant has become the most, uh, I think, valuable emoji when it wow. comes to sex. I was unaware that was a penis until yeah. I think you tweeted it about something that was like related to some I other, had a dollar like, for every time I said I was unaware <laughs> that was a penis. What would you like me to do here? Because I, I thought only mine was I had purple. a dollar for every time I said I didn't realize <laughs> right. the eggplant was a penis. Right. Like I'm always like why is my purple penis so weird? But then you find out there's an emoji for it and you feel like oh, more welcome. Oh I did welcome. tweet something about it but I don't remember what it was. I but forget it was what it was funny. too. I remember like looking tweet. and it was like oh mm. that's that's what that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So the, and peach means either like butt or vagina i'm not sure ashley do you know hmm. what's the vagina emoji 
Sure. Might be a peach. You do know. No, peach is You're on Tinder. It's it's, it's the peach it's, is a butt. It's the flower. Oh, this beautiful which flower? Game. There's so many fucking flowers. All of them, they're and they all, all look different, just all. like vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> Every flower is wildly different. Uh, Katie Nolan, uh, the, the last thing I want to ask you though is, since Ghost Bear is one of your favorite players, he's ah, a f- one of the guys in the league I respect and enjoy watching. Okay, but he's a flyer. So, as a sports mm. fan, yeah. can you separate hatred of a team and celebrating a yeah. player? You can. Uh, it's gotten easier now that I work in sports because okay. it's very hard to just like be angry at a. Yeah. A, an entire team. The only team I feel very comfortable disliking, uh, and I feel like it's it's warranted, are, are the Dallas Cowboys, because I've been attacked by their fans and also their owners a dipshit. And mm-hmm. I just, in general, uh, I feel okay hating them. But I'll still watch. I can watch a game if they're playing a team that I want to watch, or like a, a game with fantasy implications, and and not be angry at them. Kind of, but like. No, that's true. Yeah, that happens. Like, yeah. I was when I was a kid, I literally, when I was like 16, would wish that Mark Messier would die. Yeah. Mm, I yeah. literally wanted mm. him to die. And oh, now, like, man. I go to Ranger games, I cover games, I sit next to him in the press box. He's a really sweet man. Yeah. You know, he's a nice guy. Now, yeah. if he died, like, I used if he to died hate I'd be sad. the Yankees. I hated them. Like, I still do. Fuck Derek Jeter. Mm-hmm. Fuck Jorge mm-hmm. Posada. Oh, you're and singing now my it's song. Like, now it's like, well, whatever. Yeah. Derek Jeter was great, you know, art. R e two p e c t him. I I r e two p e c t him very much. He's a, good, he's a very, very I two pecked him so hard um, when he retired and like he, he his last at bat was in Fenway against my team. But it was still like wow that was really cool for you. What a re two pectful moment. Right. I will be the one to say that I I I I'm I disagree with both of you. Like if you're a player, well you're unprofessional. That I We're like. fine with that. We yes. like that. If you're a player you. that I like, and, and all of a sudden you're absorbed into the board collective of the New England Patriots, then you're yeah. dead to me. Well, like I really liked Wes. You're, you're Tom Petty. Right. So. I liked Wes Welker before he went there. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I've liked a lot of like former Jets. How's he doing now? Is he? St- he's not. He's not really. Right. I think he's. Yeah. yeah. I liked all the former Jets that would go there so Belichick could learn our secrets. That was always a good mm-hmm. thing. But then they would be dead mm-hmm. to me too. Um, same thing with the Rangers. Like when when Bruce Driver and John McClain went to the Rangers when we were both young Devils fans, they were dead to me after that. I got Bruce Driver's autograph on a Devils hat when he signed with the Rangers. He was signing all the hats. Thirty three is new number, but he signed my hat. Twenty three. Yeah. Did he? Whoa. No yeah. way. Really? He, so he was. There was still Whoa. good in him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you could have saved. Him. <laughs> That's what I mean. So, right, so like, I hate the Patriots. Uh, you do. You God's dedicate word. a more, lot of time yeah. to more, tweeting about them. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like, I can respect that. Tom Brady and Bill Belichick are very good at cheating. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Like, like they're they're t- like it's See, I, that's and, not and, easy. And, and, and then counterpoint, like I don't hate the Giants because they don't mean anything to me. I just really don't think twice about you them. You nothing because yeah. they're just. I just feel very like the who? Oh, that's right, the New York Football Giants. I, I, right. I'm sure they're still in the league. I don't quite care much. Mm-hmm. They don't. They don't matter they're much to there. me. That's fair. Personally, that's mm-hmm. fair. Right. Yeah. They really are just. They're there. just there. Yeah, yeah, they are. Okay, the, the, Jets fan. I, well, the, <laughs> but the, that's the thing, though. Like the Jets are a team that evokes emotion, though. Like when the Jets finally do win a Super no, Bowl. And like, speaking of emotions, no emotions. Uh, speaking of emotions, let's talk about your emotions. Who's your quarterback? Gonna be? Oh, we're still figuring it out. Mm. Uh, we've got a lot of receivers and a lot of running backs. We had one last year. The he had a big bushy beard. Then he trimmed it and then got good again for it's about not, two weeks. It's not Beardy McCarver. He's, it, he's he's looking for more money. Lo and behold. Uh, and who was the one that we bought in? It was oh no, we were talking about trying to bring an RG three, but we didn't mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, no, I don't. I don't think we've really figured out the air quotes quarterback do want, portion do you of want the Fitz? NFL. Yeah, I do want Fitz. Holy I liked shit. Fitz last year. I think we owe it to him to, uh, to do it one more time. You, you got you, you're gonna overpay him, but you have to. Yeah, you overpay you, the shit out of Eli over in right. what's that team's name? The one they're <laughs> the football because uh, large NFL <laughs> NFL quarterbacks are, are a worse situation than than uh, NHL goalies. Like goalies right. get overpaid all the time because they're only like like twelve of them worth so a damn in the league. Right. And, and, and also and, yours not worth a damn, but we sure made him look good at that oh game God. I went to whenever that oh, was. Oh, Keith like, Kincaid? Ago. He's so yeah, bad. Not our guy. He's so Corey bad. Schneider's our guy. He's He'll, so he, bad. Everything will be fine. Really, really but like bad. in the NFL, you have to overpay quarterbacks or else mm. you're just like, you know, it's always a great feeling when you go into camp and it's like, it's like your quarterback options are scrap heap, uh, overpaid, and broken leg. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and that's where I think the Jets might be headed. <laughs> So what are you going to do? Mm. All right. Well, that's the show uh, for this week. Uh, it was a, a sort of a pilot episode edition. Katie before, Nolan. Before we, before we let her go. Yeah. Because this oh, is going to be. Let her go felt very. Like, well, you're, before we let you're, her go, let's make her take her pants you're off. Li- <laughs> I, know, I know, right? It's like. Let's, let's do that thing. It's amazing you were able to do the show bound and gag the way you before, did. Before we let her go, walks over to the door, locks it. <laughs> Give us your Stanley Cup. Oh, yeah. Stanley Cup. Give it to us. Because 
because obviously this is running right as the playoffs are starting. Oh, yeah, shit. See, I can't because I won't know who, who made it and who, and oh, who did it. Oh, you mean you can't make your homer pick right now? Is yeah, I can't say, say the Bruins are going to win. Right. The Bruins are going to fucking uh, win. Boy. Yeah, because by the time, I was thinking about that before, by the time this airs, yeah, the, I'll make, the, I'll make people it easy will know you. who's in the... Make it easy for you. Uh, do you prefer a Chicago or a Los Angeles in the, in the final? Los Angeles. Or do you prefer a Capitals or a Penguins in the final? <laughs> Penguins. Do you prefer a penguin or a king? Uh, actually, maybe the Capitals because they're uh, they got that they got that fucking no yeah they won't. If they the have Capitals that, make it, they won't win because they got the presidents. I'll feel they, uh, the they have that fucking blank. Uh, f- uh, uh, incredible playoff pedigree of losing every year. Yeah, but also saying. just the, the president's trophy curse. True, There's they no do. way they're going to win. Oh, like a little gypsy <laughs> curse. Oh, you have the president's trophy. <laughs> uh, <Wow>. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so do you prefer a so you're wrong with the Penguins? Do you prefer a penguin or a king to win the cup? Wait, why are the Penguins involved in this game of... Because who's going to win it out of the other division? Nobody, right? It's going to be the Caps-Penguins winner that ascends to greatness, won't it? What about Tampa? Yeah, whatever. (laughs) Fuck Tampa. (laughs) You moron, get off my podcast. (laughs) You guys share this podcast. We do. We We share a microphone. 50-50. It's hockey time with Greg and Dave. Oh, the Kings. I don't fucking care. The Bruins. All right, there you go. The The Bruins. Bruins. Yeah, commit to it right now. Either Bruins or Ghost Bear. That's who I'm going to root for. There you go. One not the, the Flyers. One of those just the Bears. In true, in true Bostonian Bears. fashion, butting in where they're not wanted and then yeah. taking over the room. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Wow. What? What? I'm just saying. Huh? Excuse me? Hold on. We're, we're rivals. Did you just we're... insult me at the end of my of my podcast? This might <laughs> I took it. I don't know. Well, just, it's it. not insulting you. It's just insulting your entire heritage and the place where you love. And my dumb face. Yeah. That's, that's right. Great. I didn't Good say time. your dumb face. You were thinking it. You I saw it on your I had that I had that I had that dumb look on my face about your dumb face. There you go. We were waiting in the lobby. Remember you said her dumb face and you were just Where's her dumb face? I didn't say it at all. Katie Nolan, uh where can we so you have with the Garbage Time podcast, when is your show coming back? Uh May fourth. May the fourth be with you at Star it's, Wars Day. It is. Wow, oh. the nerd in you just God. got the largest boner, <laughs> oh my the Lord. S- smallest, <laughs> the medium-sized average boner. Uh, yeah, May the fourth. It's a Wednesday. We're back uh, for I don't know many episodes, and also that could change because that's how TV <clears throat> works. But mm-hmm. the podcast is up every Tuesday. We have a guest, and every Thursday we do um, uh, just me and my producers fucking off. So oh, there you go. You can listen Perfect. to two podcasts per week, yeah, garbage. and then we put out a digital video, which you can find at YouTube.com/slash Katie Nolan. Do you consider yourself a YouTube star? No, God no. no. You know why? Because why? I was found on YouTube. <laughs> right. But star. Uh, makes it sound like more than 2,000 people were watching my videos, and that's okay. just not the case. Unless I put the word boobs in the title, mm. or like two times I wore a tube top, which mm. now men love to use when I am when I do a sports thing, like, oh, look at you, you were a slut on YouTube. Like, oh, one time, that thing. one time it was 300 degrees, and so now that <laughs> forever ruins my integrity. Oh, did you God forbid that? I wear a goddamn tube top! I there was no nipple. Who, it was for like a bro... Guy, Guyism. I almost wrote for them. We almost were co-workers. Oh, um, wow. Chris, right? Chris. Chris Baggs, yes. who now works at Barstool Sports. Ah, oh, oh yeah. there's a lateral move. Right. Ah. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a compliment. I'm just saying, that could have been me in the tube top if I had actually yeah. gone and done it. And I could have had the same, you know, Lack of integrity. People. Yeah. Oh, I don't have any integrity. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> me neither, but I have to act like I do. Oh. Uh, like, don't you make fun of me. The way you're endorsing Twitter right now. It's just shows. a sweatshirt that has it birds on it. It is just a sweatshirt. Katie Nolan, uh, you're the best. Thank you for coming and doing this pilot episode. Have you ever done a pilot before? I don't think so. Well, I've had sex with a man I who flies never, a plane. No, but, wait uh, a second. No, 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 no I've never done a pilot say. before. Well, you're the best. Thank you for uh, making us look good. Everybody check out Katie's show on Fox Sports 1. Uh, everybody check out Katie's podcast, which will no doubt be ahead, ranked ahead of this one on iTunes. And uh, thanks for listening to It's Hockey Time with Greg and Dave. Next time we'll talk about more hockey uh, Is it hockey stuff. time or talky time? Hockey time. Hockey oh, it sounded like you said talky time, time, and I kind of love that. Mm-hmm. Like, should we change it? Like T hyphen hockey time. It's talky time. Hockey time. That would be thocky time. Like well, to hockey time. Yeah, like a t, a, it. Like a T with an apostrophe and then hockey, almost like a character in a fantasy novel. You should end the podcast now. We can do. We can offline. Bye, this. everybody. I'm Greg Wyshynski of Yahoo Sports, and I'm Dave Lozo of whatever. And I'm Katie Nolan. This is my fucking podcast. And this <laughs> has been Hockey Time. Bye. Now leaving Nerdist.com.